Just before 7.30 on Monday morning, Marty Keller called to tell him he'd better come up right away. And even before Robert Grimm cut off the conversation, his thoughts wandered off to dwell on a tempting fantasy in which he bit off Carlton Mather's scrotum, spat it out and beat his convulsing testicles to a pulp with a croquet mallet on his mother's butcher block. It wasn't a very soothing thought, but it gave him a joyless satisfaction nevertheless. Mm-hmm. Shit poetry it just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Oh, in your face, Charles Dickens. Oh, let's do this thing, guys. Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be reviewing Hex by Thomas Old Hubert. I uh, probably butchered his name, but I've, it, but I've done my best. I did this as a buddy read with Mr. Morningstar. And because his channel is vastly different to mine, he doesn't show his face. He does it through a series of images and voice recordings. And usually with buddy reads and collaborations, I usually get a clip from the other booktuber. But... We thought that we would just mention each other in this video. So Mr. Morningstar is a horror booktuber and he is really, really good. His videos are really creative. He puts a lot more time in it than any than anyone else on booktube that just sets up a camera and just records himself and just edits it. He does far more in his videos than that. And despite his videos about how outrageous and horrifying they actually look, he is really a sweet guy, he really is. And we were talking about doing a buddy read and he sent me a list and this was on it. I didn't buy this specifically for the buddy read, but I bought this brand new and it was on his list. So I thought, okay, I've got this one. We might have, we actually might as well read it. Oh my word. Um, what a book this was. This is a horror book and for this video, I won't be giving major spoilers, but I might be mentioning minor spoilers, but nothing that will overly spoil the story for you guys in case you want to read this. My thoughts on this were extremely negative, but I did see some positives in this book from time to time. And also, this is just going to be my own thoughts and feelings regarding this book. I will also have a link down to Mr. Morningstar's video on Hex down below in case you want to check out his video and we both had the same type of thoughts on this book and that was that it was a missed opportunity it was boring it wasn't scary which is probably the biggest sin for a horror book it was a real drag and struggle for me to read this book and this is just going to be more of a discussion type of video and I can't be bothered to do a review on this because quite frankly I've been dreading to do this video but I'll do my best so Hex focuses on a small town called Black Spring, which is a very nice town. Everyone gets on for the majority of the time anyway. But Black Spring has a massive secret. It has a witch that has cursed the town itself and, and uh, all of its residents. And this witch has actually got a name, which is called Catherine Von Wheeler, I think it is. I can't be bothered to look up the name but that sounds about right but the witch has her eyes sewn shut and her mouth sewn shut and she is tied up with all these chains that restrict her arms and her movement to a certain extent she yet yeah, yeah, she can walk around but that's all she does and it's implied that if her eyes open or her mouth opens or both then the town will be cursed and basically the witch will pretty much kill everyone. They don't know exactly what will happen, but they know it won't be good. And the witch isn't evil at all. Yes, we do find out about her backstory, about how she became what she is. So that was nice to go into a little bit of backstory. But for the majority of the story, she's just lingering in the background. She's just walking around in a routine route that she does pretty much every single day. And 
There's a scene in the book where a, a group of guys put a lamppost in her, yeah, um, where she actually usually walks. So she bumps into it and she finds it hard to know what to actually do. And she can actually disappear and reappear at will. She even stays in people's houses. She can go into people's houses. And they aren't, they are wary of her. They are cautious of her, but they don't really interact with her or acknowledge her. They just try to deal with the fact that she's around them all the time. But she's an outcast. No one wants to touch her because it's implied that she's like radioactive and she's like an atomic bomb. That if they touch her, they will be injured in some way. And the whole reason that this book is actually called Hex is that there is this institution or this place called Hex that has a app that's called the Hex app. And the town has all these cameras everywhere and it is set up to keep track on the witch so they know exactly where she is and what she's doing more or less every second of every day while they try to anyway. And this town is kind of split up into the grown-ups and young teenagers. Now the adults, they are very set in their ways. They know that there's a set of rules that they have to obey by. No one can leave this town whenever they move into. They are there until they basically die. No one can... Obviously people can go outside and venture outside, but they have to always return to Black Spring. So the grown-ups are set in a old tradition, an old set of rules that they have to obey by because of the curse of this witch. But the teenagers, for the majority of the time, want to rebel against this. And it's implied that the reason that one of them wants to do this, um, partially because he wants to see his girlfriend more regularly because she's out of town and in another area, that he wants to get better Wi-Fi and better internet. I'm like, okay, you don't want to like escape this curse and potentially be gruesomely killed if this witch ever opens her eyes or opens her mouth. And there's this one kid called Jaden in this story that is kind of like the Henry Bowers of this town. And he is constantly trying to provoke the witch into doing something. He sees her as nothing but a piece of dirt on his shoe and completely worthless and he doesn't see the point why everyone's very afraid of her and he throws rocks at her he even gets an, a, a box cutter and stabs her in the nipple and that's another thing as well guys that <laughs> this book mentions the word nipple yes i know the thing you know basically that a ridiculous amount of times and I'm and I'm like telling Morningstar that does this author have a fixation on nipples um but yeah um so he actually stabs her in the nipple and he even looks at her yeah breast as well and it isn't really said in black and white but it's implied that he is sexually aroused by this there are also people in the town that for the majority of the time, people keep away from the witch. They, as, as I said, they know that she's there, but they, they don't want to provoke her. But there are people in the town that want to try to repent for what they have done, what their ancestors have done to this witch. That's why the curse has actually been put on them by the witch herself, because of what her, ans about what these town members' ancestors did to her in the past. And they just want to repent for their sins, and to try to please her and make her happy and say, right, look, you don't have to fear me. And I'm trying to make up for what is going on and what happened to you as well. I'm basically so sorry. And then when you're reading this, you, you come to the conclusion that it could either go two ways. It could go one way where the town defeats the witch and kills her, which it isn't really implied that anyone's even trying to remotely do that or get rid of her. It's implied that the witch is hundreds and hundreds of years old and that she is immortal, but it's never really implied that she cannot be killed. Maybe it does, maybe if she is killed she'll come back and be re resurrected, but I didn't really 
pick up on that. So with the whole plot about killing the witch out of the window, it could only lead to one logical conclusion. And that is eventually the witch will get her eyes and mouth opened. So throughout the story, when she has her mouth sewn up, this is why people are so afraid of her, is that she is constantly mumbling and whispering to herself through her stitches in her mouth. And anyone that hears this whispering, stuff actually happens to them, bad stuff happens to them. And uh, that's why they're afraid of when her mouth is open, that when she speaks, she will um, make everyone go crazy and yeah, all that type of stuff. So this has a quote on the um, top of the book by Stephen King himself. This is totally brilliantly original by Stephen King. And I was thinking about this because I'm a massive Stephen King fan. And I know that in a lot of his books, the town is a character all in itself. And the characters within that town are a essential element for the book and that drives it forward and there is a creature outside of that that is a threat to it but it's kind of lurking in the background and then every now and then attacks the town and does something really really horrible to the residents of that town such as it with Pennywise the dancing clown you have Salem's Lot with Mr Barlow and you have the town in needful things with the shop as well when the owner of that shop the name kind of escapes me but if you've read the book you know who i'm talking about but there is a massive difference between them books and this one when it comes to the town itself and the residents of that town mostly is that in them books you become a resident of the town when you're reading them novels you get to know all the characters and you know how different they are and you can connect with all of them whether they are good and bad with this the town is the character and the residents are okay uh i didn't really care about any of them and that's a kind of a flaw when it comes to a horror book is that if you don't care about any of the characters why would you even care if anything bad happened to them Yes, there were a couple that I, I wouldn't say liked, but I found intriguing and interesting more than others. Such as Steve, who is, I wouldn't say our main character, but he's the closest thing to our main character that we have in this book. And his son, Taylor, who is a YouTube creator. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he's always filming videos about the witch. And also Jaden's mum, who worships the witch. Uh, they were probably the probably the only characters that I actually liked. And also, this town promotes the fact that they actually hide the witch in plain sight. They don't keep it a secret, and they even have festivals to actually celebrate her as well. They have this massive kind of like this massive um, wicker figure of this witch, where they do a ceremonial burning and they have offerings that they throw on to the bonfire to offer to do the witch and they have all these uh, people in costumes and photo opportunities with the witch and the reason why they do this is because they know that if someone from the outside world watches them or comes into their town because they're not isolated people can come in and out as soon as they I mean as often as they can from outside but the reason why they do this is because if someone comes into their town and accidentally comes across the witch that they won't be scared and they'll say oh oh someone's just walking in the street dressed like dressed as a witch okay fair enough you know let's go to the um nearest bar and have a drink as i said at times this book is really interesting and it did pick up a little bit but for the majority of the time I was just bored. I was just reading this um, whenever I could. And even though it's a very small book, it's about 380 pages with the, with the um, acknowledgements at the back, which I didn't read because at that point 
I was bored, but it was a struggle to read, it really was. And even though I had glimmers of enjoyment from this, primarily because of the town and the residents and because I'm a Stephen King fan, it wasn't that great of a horror book. The witch isn't evil at all, she doesn't do anything evil. She only walks around, she disappears and reappears whenever she wants. The only evil thing that I can think that she does in this book is that she attacks a dog and throws it across the room and hangs it from a tree, which eventually kills it. And the reason why she does this is because the dog attacked her first. So she doesn't really do anything evil in my opinion. She's, I mean, I wanted to have a real evil witch, you know, like a demon worshipping, you know, a uh, blood drinking, goat sacrificing, spell casting, child abducting, evil hag in this for this book. But I didn't get that. I got a pushover. I got a joke of a witch. And I know that some people would like this book, but this is what I consider light horror. If you are trying to get into horror, but you don't want to get into the extreme side of it, then yeah. Uh, yeah, read this but if you are a horror fan then maybe give this one a miss or if you are intrigued then try to listen to it on audio or pick up a really cheap copy but I wouldn't recommend this really so yeah I'm gonna rate this story a two and a half stars out of five I'm gonna rate the whole story a two stars but I'm gonna give the half star to the fact that I did this as a buddy read, which, as Mr. Morningstar agreed with me in the email, that doing a buddy read was the best part of this book. So that's it, guys. That is my little review for Hex. Sorry that it's been on for, gone on for too long. I wanted to get my thoughts out there. And let me know if you have read this, what your thoughts are on about this. And if you liked it, that's great. This is just my opinion on this book. I'm probably never going to ever pick up anything by Thomas ever again. But, yeah, it was just one of the unfortunate things, I suppose. So, with all that out of the way, have a great day. Read some awesome books, and I will see you all in my next video.